Hello and welcome. This is Democracy in Practice on the twin broadcast of Liberty Television and Liberty Radio. I am Mahmoud Tunde Hassan. Nigeria is at the moment engaged in intense process leading to the 2023 general elections during which a president will be elected for the country. That election will be the seventh since the return to civil democracy in 1999. However, for Nigerians and indeed the rest of the world, the stakes are high in relation to the crucial task of arresting the same national drift and the desire for a national rebirth. The 2023 general elections is generally considered critical and rightly so. 18 candidates from 18 political parties are in the race jostling to mount the saddle as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm joined in the studio by Prince Adewole Adebayo, presidential flag bearer of the Social Democratic Party SDP, one of the 18 beckoning on Nigeria to consider them to drive the affairs of the country. And indeed, the ultimate decision will be that of Nigerians. Join me in welcoming Prince Adibaya. It's a pleasure, and thank you very much. Well, for those seeking to be entrusted with public trust in public office, they must also be ready to subject themselves to public scrutiny. But starting from that premise, who is Prince Adewale Adebayo? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a simple Nigerian, a humble Nigerian. Um, a Nigerian from Mondo State. I am a lawyer. I have a few investments in enterprises. I own investments in the media, in agriculture, in uh, pharmaceutics, in a few other areas. And I'm a member of the Social Democratic Party. And I'm the flag bearer of the party. Uh, entrusted by members of my party. And uh, that's where we are. I, I, you see, uh, I mean, I started with this from the premise of public scrutiny and the perception of uh, other people who, in whose hand ultimately decision as to who leads them really is. There's this perception within the public space, especially within the polity, about big parties, small parties, big candidates, small candidates, uh, startup candidates, underdogs, and uh, regular recycled faces. In all of this, where do you fit in and where does the SDP fit in? Well, uh, uh, we as SDP, we fit into the right candidates, the right party, the right moment, the right mm -hmm. challenge. Uh, it's not um, something that is logical for any political party to call themselves a big party because they haven't solved any of our big problems mm -hmm. and they can't solve any of our small problems. Mm -hmm. So I think basically you, you are a man when you rise to the occasion. So the way you can call yourself a big party is if, given the opportunity that the country has entrusted, you, you have risen to the occasion. So I think basically, um, for us, we are letting Nigerians know that it's not about the big parties now. It's not about size. That's an egoistic analysis. Mm. It's more about understanding the challenge of the times, uh, presenting an appropriate candidate to face the challenge of the time, and the size of the person of the party is not important. That you see, however big a ship is, mm. uh, the captain who is at the bridge sailing that ship may be a 19-year-old or 20-year-old <laughs> skinny fellow. Mm. And if you see trucks, or uh, heavy-duty trucks on the road, you see how big the truck is. But you, when you go to the driver's seat, you find someone very skinny, simple driving it. So it's ideas that I drive a uh, country. So I think we should go away from being a country of big men to a country of big ideas mm -hmm. and a country of big vision. And 
a country of great deeds, uh, not men uh, laying claim to greatness based on how much money they've acquired and all of that, or being, how many years they've been hanging around. So that's, we're trying to refocus the country. Uh, so that's, I think that the, the uh, Social Democratic Party is reading the mood of the nation. Uh, do, do you think that, um, I mean, you, you've been at this for, you started this journey in the couple, past couple of months to the point where you are now. Do you think Nigerians are reading the, 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 the need to reset the thinking in this country along the path that you are talking about? No, are, I they, think, are they in tandem with the thinking of Nigerians? I think the thinking of Nigerians are set by the circumstances we are facing. Hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's not... This is not a time of luxury. This is not a time of leisure. This is not a time where you make a choice. It's a time where the choice is made for you. Uh, this election is the only one that I know of that people's lives are actually at stake. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, they would say someone's life is at stake. You could say, well, I'm not in the election. I'm not, uh, even I don't want to vote. I don't want to go and take a risk. But even if you're at home now, your life is at risk. Uh, there's, I don't know of any person whose liberty is not at risk. Anybody could be kidnapped any time, harassed any time. I don't know anybody whose economic status is not at stake. Even if you are at home, you can get poorer by the day because of inflation, hyperinflation. You can get poorer by the day because of exchange rate. There's nobody whose um, dreams cannot be cut short. You just take one bullet in the head from a random uh, bandit and you're gone. So all these things you reset our mind for us. I think Nigerians know now that if your salvation uh, is not in the hand of the government, the salvation can be in your thumb, mm -hmm. what you thumb print. Mm -hmm. And that's the, so it's not a matter of people making fancy choices now. It's a question of people saying, uh, it looks like this may be the last moment uh, for anyone who is facing this kind of geopardy we are facing. I've never known any country by any indices that you set that is facing existential challenges like we are facing now. So in every front, and uh, people are thinking individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. And all the old paradigms have proven themselves to be part of the problems too. So going back to say you're looking for someone uh, who has experience, you're looking for someone who has uh, many friends everywhere, I think uh, that's not too much. Before people have realized we've tried that, it doesn't work. Uh, we've tried. 16 years, okay, let's give a, a, a party many years so that they cannot say, well, we didn't have enough time, we've seen that it's not good enough. As poorly performed as the current government is, Nigerians in 2019 said, look, give them a second chance. Mm -hmm. And now we realize that they've run out of ropes. So I think a new party is what the country is looking for. Okay, and um, between 1999 to this present uh, moment, Nigeria has gone through we, we kept saying nascent democracy and all whatnot. But thinking at the moment is that the nation seemed to be adrift. Requiring people who come, not just with ideas, but with the capacity to, to drive those ideas and to deliver for the people. Do you, in, in the, in the run-up and the, all the activities, the processes leading to 2023, do you see you and the others angling to drive national affairs, really focusing on the issues really at stake? Because Nigeria is currently, without missing word and being in denial, is at a crossroad. See, there, there is a realism hmm. which it has done on people like us, which may not have done on the old, uh, bigger political parties, as they call themselves. You still we, use the word big? Yeah, that's why I put it in code, as they call themselves. There is this idea that victory is on election day. The, that's what the traditional political class believe. So in the, all their vision, in all their energy, is what takes them to the election day. From there, the darkness begins. We believe that victory is not on election day. Victory is the beginning of work. And victory is when you have delivered the goods to the people, when you have delivered the mandate for the people. 
in terms of security, social welfare, development, equity, justice, vision development. So we spend a lot of our time telling the people how we are going to solve the problems of the country, letting them know that we've been studying the situation, we know where we got to where we are. They, must, they will be spending their time on, we know how to win. So when we're making selection of our team, when we are, we are positioning ourselves out to win. Win to them is going to the office. Win for us is when the people of Nigeria can say they have a government that represents them and they don't re resort to self-help anymore. They don't rely on self-help for security, for provision of services, for education, for so many things that are by nature governmental. So that is victory for us. So we spend time we're focusing on that. That's why you don't see us looking like we're dwelling too much on the political drama that comes regularly. Mm -hmm. That's why some people might say, well, you, are you guys, you know, why are you not loud like them? Why are you not doing? We believe that talking to people, I don't, in the tradition of SDP, we don't go around uh, just memorizing things and telling people. Mm -hmm. We go around on a listening tour to say, what do you think is wrong with the country? What is the matter? What's your own experience about the country? We do this interaction. And from this interaction, we see the problems that people are facing. But from this interaction, we get hope because the solutions are with the people. It's just that the government stands in the way each time. So each time you say, well, we need to grow more food in the country, and you want to go and grow more food, the government will use insecurity to stand in your way. If you say, oh, I have ideas, I can create employment for myself. The government uses red tape and lack of infrastructure to stand in your way. If you come out and you say, I want to use my talent to do public service, mm -hmm. the government makes sure the money is missing, your salary doesn't get paid. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you were a young man who visions and envisions that your country is one that grew up in science, engineering, technology, and maths. And you say, because I have a very good grasp of this and I have a first class, so let me go and teach in the, in the university. Then the government still stands in your way. The government is going to make sure you, go, you don't get paid, the university is run down. So whatever you want to do, the government gets in your way. So my job is to come in and lead the SDP to get the government out of your way. So once the government is out of your way, you have the vision of what you want to do. And the government can be a tailwind which is pushing you forward. This is very interesting, um, getting the government out of the way. Are you talking about minimal government or, or running government well? What do you mean by getting government out of the way? A responsible government mm. is a facilitator. Whatever your dream is, that's why the government picks you from, your, from the crib and puts you in school. Mm. That's why the government sends a teacher to, 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 to see whether you have a talent for the arts, whether you are, have aptitude for mathematics. So government wants to discover who you are. The government did not create you. The government is studying you in society and saying that oh, you, you can run very fast. Maybe we should put you in athletics. No, you are very good with your left hand. Maybe you should be a tennis player. So the government, is, that's the job of the government. So if you look at everyone who has made a success out of their life in this country, it was because the government of the past was a facilitator. I always say something out of respect. That I, and I say with due respect to the president of Nigeria, he will have been a boy following the cattle. It was the government of Amadou Bello that picked him up as, a, as, a, as an orphan and put him in a boarding primary school and saw that he was doing well and put him in a boarding secondary school and thought that, okay, this is a very tall, uh, gallant young man and put him in the army and trained him to become a general. Look at the difference between a general and a cattle rearer. Mm -hmm. That's, that's government. That's facilitation. But the government is not getting in his, in his way. But now, he has been in government for seven and a half years, getting in the way of other people. So if you're a kid, you just want to go to school and be a physicist. The government is in your way. They close your school. They are not going to negotiate with your teachers. If you've managed to train yourself and you come out, they're not going to give you a job. If you have a job, they will not pay you. And if they pay you, they will so destroy the currency that your money is so useless, you ask yourself, it is better to be a criminal than to be a physicist. What you're so that is the problem yes, of the government. There seem to be um, re-engineering or recrafting the notion of government. Yes. Is that what you Yes, because a government is not a bunch of incumbents hmm. occupying government buildings. 
A government is humble public servants rendering service to the public who look at gaps in our, inter in our relationship and realize that there are some things that we can do for ourselves, but there are some things we must do in the collective. So those things we must do in the collective, having safe cities, safe roads, provision of water, and all those things, electricity, uh, making schools work, creating a court system that works, that gives you justice, that creates a protection for you, that encourages you to be a good citizen in a country. That is the job of the government. That's what the government does. When you see a government, a government that is good will be very quiet, will be very limited, and will be very small. And that is the role of the government. But our government is very loud, is unlimited in its abusive powers, and it's not productive. So that is where the problem lies. And the government takes all the oxygen of everybody. They control the land, they control the money, they control almost everything. So that is why we have to really engineer our governmental system. But you need to rethink the process. We need to flip this, the, what we have now, where we all are subject to the government and we serve the government. We need to flip it. That's what other countries have done. I'm not inventing anything new. I am saying that a limited government that renders services, you get the government from a simple things. For example, do you run a simple, can you post a letter? Mm -hmm. Can you write a letter to the president or to even counselor and get a reply? Can you, can the government serve you? That's those are the things, even the police, their job is to serve you. And the army is not supposed to be going around the streets, supposed to defend the territorial integrity and keep you safe. So that wherever you're coming from, once you enter into the precinct of Nigeria, you know that you are safe from harm. That's not what is happening now. Let me take it from this angle that for you we should have limited government in this country by the constitution of nigeria the government is limited the government is limited in many ways first the government must first obey the law so um, so in that that there are for every law that a, an individual citizen must obey there are 35 that the government must obey first so the way our law is written the people who are in government are supposed to be the most law-abiding of our citizens. That is not what we have. No, because it is a lawless system they want to impose upon us. And luckily for us, no tyranny is expected to last more than four years. <laughs> because that tyranny will expire and people will review your work and say, away with you. But we are a very generous and nuanced society. We give excuses on behalf of people. So whatever you do in Nigeria, our culture is a generous one. So if you see, if you see an incompetent person, we'll say, ah, he's old, let's forgive him. If you see a corrupt person, we'll say, ah, you know, he's not the only one. Uh, so we keep giving excuses. So for this reason, these excuses have caught up with us as a society. Because all these years of cumulative impunity has classified into a culture where people in government just take everyone for granted. In fact, people ordinarily were nobodies, the like average persons, when they are in government for a while, they think they own the country. Mm -hmm. So they want, when you question them, they look at, why are you even questioning me? And when you ask them to leave the office, they wonder, why should I leave? I'm supposed to be here forever. And they have now formed a, a, a queue in front of the government building, where they just do like a relay, they give, give it to each other. Mm -hmm. And there's no question as to, what is the purpose of government? And why is it that God has been so kind and generous to the people of Nigeria that everything you need to make your life exquisite, your life a luxury, as we give it to Nigeria. Nigeria is not a country where God wants us to just get along, get by. No, everything that you make you live on earth as if you were already having a taste of paradise is given to the country. The only error in the equation is the kind of government we, we put in charge. And because of the fact that we have been too generous, too forgiving mm. to the government, they've taken it for granted that it's their right to ensure that 80% of the crude oil which God has given us is stolen. That it is their right that 95% of our resources stolen. It's our right 
that they can be in office in perpetuity and not solve a single problem. Is their right that they can ruin the economy, ruin the currency, ruin everything, and still come on election day and flaunt your money in your face and say, take this and yeah, let me go back in there and do more damage. So that when you come from among the citizenry, as an, an ordinary, honest Nigerian, you are bringing ideas and governizing your fellow compatriots on how to ride the ship of the country. They laugh at you and say, oh, you, you are too ordinary. You don't have billions. You're not part of us. How can you ever even come there? So they, if you talk to voters, they laugh at you. Why are you wasting your time talking to voters? In which case, we, we've got everything. problems can be located within the circle of the followers? Now, you, you see, it is the responsibility of the leader to lead well. And cultures differ from place to place. And there are two sets of leaders, or two types of leaders in the typology of leadership. Some look at the weakness of their people and turn it into strength. Some look at the weakness of their people and exploit it. So Nigerians are brilliant. And we've been hearing stories and cautions and concerns about the weaponization of poverty in Nigeria. Poverty is imported into Nigeria. Hmm. It is imported by the government. Because many countries of the world form governments to take for their people what they don't have. That's why the British came here. That's why they went to India for sugar, went for textile, went for everything. That's why they're coming here. Everybody coming to Africa is coming to take something they don't have. Ours is the only one that throws away what we have. So it's, that's the problem that we have in leadership. We're not asking the government to give us anything we don't have already. Mm. We're only saying, let us be able to lead our life the way we, we can. There are people all over the world that they live in the desert. Israel is one of them, many other countries are, are there in Mongolia, many countries. They live in the desert. They don't have water. I lived many years in California. They, however brilliant the governor of California is, there are years it's going to go to rain. Mm. So, but they go out to the sea, they go everywhere to fight for their people what they don't have. What our government thinks their role is, is to confiscate everything we have, throw away as much of it as possible, and be given a commission of about 5 to 3 percent, take the little they are even given, and take it overseas, mm. and enrich people, and feel happy that they are going outside, uh, throw away everything we, we have, and that level of superiority over us, but inferiority to foreign authorities. Mm. So what we need to do now is to wake up and realize that as generous as we are in spirit, as our culture is tolerant, but our leaders have got to a point where they don't longer lead us, they are exploiting us. And they don't even want us to see the sun in safety. And everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. Mm. And everything that can be right, they have deliberately tilted it towards going wrong too. So, for example, the U.S. Army, as big as the U.S. is, is short of manpower by 30,000 men. They try to recruit, they can't find. Nigeria is the only, they even come here to recruit citizens. They go all over the world. Nigeria is the only country that's facing insecurity. They, they will not even recruit. If you, if you look at the record, there are more people. So show you how patriotic Nigerians are. There are more people applying every year to join the police. Mm. More people applying to join the armed forces. They will not take them. They will not. So this is because they believe that the insecurity is an opportunity to enrich those who are already there. Yeah, so that is the problem that we are facing and we need to be able to nip that now. Well, I've been in, in this conversation with uh, Prince Adewo, Adewole Adebayo, the presidential flag bearer of the Social Democratic Party. We're engaging issues that are critical to remaking Nigeria and setting it on the path of greatness and deepening democracy uh, for other the good of uh, the citizens. We'll continue this conversation after this play. It's critical to know that Nigeria cannot continue to be on the path that it has been thus far. And the 2023 general election offers an opportunity for Nigerians to dissect and sift among those presenting themselves to drive the national agenda. We'll be right back. 
to continue this conversation. Democracy in practice. Democracy in practice. Yeah, welcome back, Democracy in Practice, reaching you on the combined service of Liberty Television and Liberty Radio. We're driving from Abuja, the Nigerian capital, and we're discussing Nigeria. This discussion is going to continue for a while, up, uh, to, up uh, to 2023. This pre-election year is, again, an opportunity for Nigeria to remake itself, and uh, those offering themselves to be able to drive this process uh, also subject to public scrutiny. And that's what we're doing on Democracy in Practice uh, this outing. I am in the studio with uh, Prince Adewale Adebayo, who is the presidential flag bearer of uh, the Social Democratic Party, SDP. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure, thank you. Before we went on the break, we're looking at the way things have been. So far in the discussions leading to 2023, and those who uh, angling to drive the national agenda uh, in whatever capacity, especially the presidential candidates, one of which you are. I've been talking about what has been wrong with this country for the past 60 years, but more pointedly, since the return to democracy in 1999. We're so high on pointing at the ills that have happened and very low in bringing forth new ideas, new suggestions and a path to further development beyond the blame game. What's, what's your reading of how we're approaching the critical issues confronting this country, both as candidates, as political parties and institutions and Nigerians generally? Well, there is no need for a blame game beyond the need for accountability. Because in Nigeria, because the political parties in power and the governments we've been having since 1999 have done so poorly, saying the truth, just simply saying the truth, is already a criticism. Mm. Saying who broke the jar is already a blame because the jar is not supposed to be broken. Mm. So that is where it looks like it's a hostile discussion. 
But the spirit with which we approach it, ABSDP, is to be historical in our approach to it. To say that in 1993, Nigerians voted for a mandate of farewell to poverty. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was inconceivable for anyone to talk about insecurity. Nigeria was secure, so secure that we were securing the rest of West and Central Africa. Mm -hmm. We went to Liberia, we went to Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. so secure that we went to uh, the Gulf of Aden to go and help our brothers in Ethiopia. Even we went to Bosnia. We went to Bosnia, we went to Sudan. So you have many of our barracks named after all these places where we have made this place. Mm -hmm. Now, the poverty of 1993 that we were not even happy about. It was not the poverty we have now, which is far worse. And at that time, in the 90s, when we said farewell to poverty, the year was 10%, just as 10% as rich as we are now. We are 100 times richer than, or 10 times richer than we were. And the people have grown poor. Grown, grown poor. So if you don't say this, then you don't know where you are. Mm. So we know where we are. Now, you may also want to know why. And why is not because you have not got a ruler from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, or anywhere. And we have not only got from, from military, we've got civilians as well. So it's not because you haven't got somebody who's experienced, you've got experienced people. This country, we've done every experiment any country can do. Mm. South Africa went to prison and brought Mandela. We went to prison and brought Obasanjo. Mandela had a different outcome. Obasanjo had a different outcome. Same experience of going to prison and coming back, back to life. We've gone to the youth. We went and got um, Gula Jonathan. I wasn't particularly too old. Now we went and went back to 1984 and brought out uh, Buhari. We tried um, the PDP, we tried the APC. So now we need to now have a unifying theory because a Christian has ruled, a Muslim has ruled. North has ruled, South has ruled. So wh what is wrong? Younger, young has ruled, old has ruled. You know, yes, so the young will be less, but <laughs> what we need to understand is that you cannot look for what to buy with money and not use what God has given to you, you can get without money. Mm -hmm. Truth does not cost money. Mm -hmm. Justice does not cost money. Mm -hmm. Peace does not cost money. What costs money is falsehood because you need to bribe people to support your falsehood. Mm -hmm. You need to invent things to do. Injustice costs money mm -hmm. and it costs blood as well. War costs money. So what is, what's happened to us is that we have refused to say the truth. You cannot be in government today and lose your job because you lie to the public. But anywhere else in the world, if you lie to the public, you lose your job, however fantastic you are. Two, no citizen can approach a government for justice. Even inside the country, there's no justice. To show you how deep injustice is Nigeria. The chief justice of Nigeria went to court to say he had been denied justice. Mm. If the chief justice of the federation, who is the symbol of justice in Nigeria and to whom every common man goes to, went to court to say the system has been unjust to me, which shows that the system he was presiding over has been doing monumental injustice to mm -hmm. every Nigerian. He only touched him at the tail of his finger, the tip of his finger, that he was already crying. Remember when uh, the EFCC chairman went to court to say his fundamental human right has been, been tra 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 trampled upon yes. because he was detained for a week, but he had detained people for three years. So what I'm bringing out is that we have not organized our principle around the fact that these noble doctrines of truth, justice, equity, fairness, accountability, they are the wealth of the nation, it's not oil. Mm. So a country that has no oil 
if they have truth, justice, equity, fairness, and accountability, you will take your oil and go and refine in their country and pay them money. Because your lack of truth, your dishonesty, your injustice, your greed will make you to lack what you have and also lack what you don't have. So that is what we need to bring back now. And that Nigerians should get used to having humble people lead them. Mm -hmm. But bring great and strong institutions that any humble person can manipulate. As big as the biggest ship is in the world, with the careful management of the rudder, mm -hmm. a simple person can operate it. Even a fighter jet, even the jumbo jet, a slim, simple pilot with the co-pilot following the principle of avian, aviation and avionics, they will be able to write it. So Nigerians think that when they face any situation, they must confront Goliath with Goliath. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can get a simple David to help you defeat the Goliath. So you, but you must have humility, you must realize that your term or net is short. And that you cannot be in power from 1966 and continue to be in power forever. You are not God. You want time, something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you not need to know that your time in service is an opportunity to serve on the altar, to serve other people. And that the way you want to be treated when you are out is how you will treat people now that you are in. Okay. So those are the principles that our founding fathers had. That was why you cannot point. You cannot point to a mansion owned by Amadou Bello, mm -hmm. and you cannot see Amadou Kano business enterprises anywhere. So, but there is Amadou Kano airport. There is Amadou Bello way everywhere I go. But there is Amadou Bello university. But our people would rather kill the public university, take the money, and build the university and name it after themselves. So we have turned the table. So what I, we are bringing forward in 2023 for SDP is not. It's not to repeat the same promises as before. Mm -hmm. That we bring character mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. We bring, you have to rule the people, not from the lips. You rule the people from the heart. Mm -hmm. And you use your head, or whatever idea you have, in the service of the people. And if the voters are looking for that, and we understand that, that you try everybody. You try the people who call themselves generous, who call themselves this or that. And they've been defeated by ragtag bandits mm. with no name. So you need now to realize that but nobody can defeat truth. Nobody can defeat justice. All the fault lines in the country is coming out of the artificial scarcity created by the people who are in leadership. Yeah, I even want to get your position on these fault lines that seem to be driving the discussion leading to 2023. Religion, ethnicity, uh, regionalism, uh, who has done it, who has not done it, from what so on. What's your position on all of this conversation? There are two, two angles to it. There is the structural angle, where when you are driving on the road, you don't notice your neighbor, until there's a traffic jam. Then you are trying to overtake each other, they run into each other's cars, mm -hmm. and they start to say, are you as big as I am? I mean, I've got a PhD in physics. Who are you? I'm the third game. But if there was no traffic jam, you will be driving on your lane, and you will not even know that someone is driving. You just So government is creating traffic jam in every interaction in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. When we had schools, we had schools proportionate to our population. But subsequently, those who went to those schools were three in a room and enjoyed themselves, started stealing our money. And they built no more schools. So now you have 50,000 children have to compete for a place of 500. Then they say state of origin, uh, religion, and all of that. So they create this artificial scarcity. And we'll throw up the fault line. Yeah, exactly. So when you graduate from, when, you, when they graduated, seven jobs will be looking for them. So nobody cares about their religion because there are seven jobs. You can choose any of the seven jobs if you want. In our own case, they want 70,000 people to be looking for 70 jobs. Then they start to ration it. You say, the reason why I didn't get a job is because that full animal stopped me. If I was a Christian, they would have hired me there. But you see, government have created the fault lines. In the past, nobody would care. So you could go to a mission school and be a stark Muslim. They will take you because they are looking for teachers. So. Look at Abuja, look at everywhere. They create scarcity. 
So people are piling on top of each other, but there's land everywhere. Mm -hmm. So government creates all these things in order to distract. That's the other angle to it. So in all of these, yes. the problems we're facing, are you saying is state-induced? It is the bread and butter of political leaders to do divide and rule. Mm. Why is that? And I, you don't have enough time, but I'll give you this historical link. The government of Nigeria that we first had was a hostile takeover government. It was a private company registered in London mm. by Tom Goldie. Mm. He came to exploit Royal Niger Company. Mm. Then they were now doing well, making profit, and then the British bought it over. Mm. And they were doing rail line everything to take everything to Liverpool mm. and Manchester. Mm. So it was a government that meant to ex exploit us. So other countries, when they got independence, they turned the table around and turned to government of the people. But our own way, they didn't do it. They didn't have enough time to do those who wanted to do it. But another generation came that now took advantage. They were still behaving like a foreign government. So that's everything about our government is foreign to us. So even when our head of state is sick, he goes to a foreign hospital. When he has children, he's sent to foreign school. When you see them, and everything they do is foreign. When they want to make the best speeches, they don't talk to us, they go and talk to foreign government. When they want to take idea, they take foreign. So they don't see. And so the, the same divide and rule fault line that they inherited from a foreign government hostile one trying to oppress us is the same one. But when it comes to stealing our money, their unity has never been tighter. So when it's time to cheat us, the unity is stronger. Mm. That's they, quite unfortunate. They don't remember that. Mm. So you will find out that if you want to know how United Nigeria is, take a, a typical criminal charge of stealing money. You will find your cousin there, your church member there, the guy in your mosque there. All of them, you will say, how did they bury all their differences and steal this one billion? How did they bury all their differences and steal this 100 billion? Can they not bury these their differences down when they are choosing political leaders? Mm. But those are all the things done to distract. So that when you have a sense of identity, you share with them, they exploit that identity to exploit you. So you are not able to ask for no more simple question, the kind of question your mother will ask you mm. when you come back from school. Is that ruler, does it belong to you? Who gave you that bag? Why did you come late? Who, who gave you that thing? Why, 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 are you, why is your performance low? Simple questions, honest questions that if you remember how you were brought up, those are the kind of questions you should ask people in government. What is your, do you know today as I speak to you that the private secretary, the confidential secretary to the president of Nigeria, mm -hmm. the president of Nigeria knows that this my confidential secretary that carries my file up and down the salary is earning, or she is earning, cannot pay the rent where they are staying. And the president cannot make that conversation to say, how are you surviving? Because I know the salary you are earning. So, but even the president himself knows that the salary of the president that he is earning cannot sustain his family. So we start that going away from those simple straight lines to where we now get ourselves so convoluted. If you look at people who are serving in government, not only this government, it's the government before it, they do things, some of them even run for election, spend billions in advertising, in buying vehicles, in renting offices. Nobody is questioning them to say, but you are, in this, you are in government. How did you have access to all of these things? I'm raising all of these things to let us know that there's nothing new you can add to Nigeria. Mm. This is the country of Bala Yusman. You can't be more brilliant than that. Mm. This is the country of Arabi Diko. This is the country of Wole Shonika, Shino Achebe. What, what don't we have? We have everything. So you cannot come and say, that when we're designing Abuja, one of the best engineers, is, um, surveyors, lamp, town planners, architects, and Nigerians, Bola mm. Diola, mm. uh, even Oyegun was part of them, uh, Alice Kweme, many people. So we have everything. Why is it that we who have everything have nothing to show for everything we got? And people, it's a country called Botswana. They, have, they are known worldwide for having a fantastic justice system. Mm -hmm. And all over the world, people go to Botswana to do business and, and everything. Botswana is rated to have the best bureaucracy in Africa. But did you know how they got it? They took a borrow from Nigeria, one man called Timothy Akinola Aguda. He went to Botswana and set up the system for them. That same Aguda 
was the person who helped us to locate Abuja here. That's why we have a good house. So where they have come from is chaos. People from Nigeria go and all over the world. What is the reason why we can't do it at home? Because once you come home, we suspend truth, we suspend justice, we suspend equity, we suspend fairness. And you need to vote a government that is now bringing that and that's the measurement of what you are going to use. So when you are fair, when you are just, no money will be missing. You will not do a 15 kilometer road for 50 billion. You will be fair and you'll be just. It is that's all that is happening. Mm -hmm. The reason why we have this uh, systemic collapse is that the people in government thought that they could create a country for themselves within the country where the troubles facing us, which fella Anikukuti was singing with, water, light, food, house, we didn't do them. Why don't we have? They thought they could create a Koji for themselves, and when they got them out of Lagos, they could come to Abuja and create Mitama for themselves, create this, put some money in France, put some money everywhere, and go to Dubai for a weekend, and that the rest of the country will keep quiet and be working for them. It doesn't work that way, because People are going to react. Mm -hmm. Tension will build. And in part of the chaos, when people are biting and fighting each other, some of the spillover will now affect the elite. The reason why, for the first time, we are putting insecurity and all of these things on the front burner is that the insecurity now is getting to the point where people say they are going to grab the most important person in this country. So that is now the reason why the injustice, the insecurity, the unfairness, and all the tribulation of the people that they've been suffering for 40 mm. odd years is now coming to the upper elite. It's coming They're now to beginning boost. now mm. to now put in the front burner of the agenda. But don't listen to politicians at the time of election. They, that is where they borrow humility. <laughs> they kiss babies, mm. they listen to you, mm -hmm. but immediately they get elected, they put the cutting wool. Okay. So it's for the people now to go to their ranks and get somebody from your rank and put him in power, then you will see a difference. Cut the past loose and start afresh. We know that um, in terms of uh, the arrangements for campaigns and stuff like that hasn't really been uh, started um, in, in, in the context of the Electoral Act. Yes. But this is SDP, yes. and this is Prince Adewale Adebayo, yes. and this is a man wanting to be president of Nigeria. Yeah. Bring the three together. Yes. What can we expect from you as a person, as a flag bearer, and as a political party? Okay, let me start from the collective, the political party. We are doing what we've always done. We did in 1993 with MQ Abiola. We said one. Is today's SDP reminiscent of a uh, 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 reinvention of the old SDP? That's what it is. We are running on the same principle. That's why 30 years ago we said farewell to poverty. Now we are saying farewell to poverty and insecurity. That's why we, uh, 30 years ago we said hope 93. 2023 we are saying hope again 2023. Why we are doing that is not church mimicking a drama. No. We look at the history of the country and said that we missed the road after God gave us the light in, in 1993. We missed the road, we are not the election, we went back into uh, military politics. And 1999, we did military transition from a military uniform to military without uniform. And we continue to militarize our democracy up to now. And the war of attrition that Carter and all that is what comes within our political party. They sack their chairman, they do all sort of things. Mm -hmm. And Christoph should chaos that you just, you who are to make the decision, you just stay away and say, I don't know what they are doing. So we said that must end now. Then, if you look at the manifesto of Abiola, Abiola's SDP, same manifesto we are using. And that manifesto is anchored in Chapter 2 of our Constitution that we must spend money on social investment. That's how our name starts with social. And that the application of our resources and all the talent given to the country must be done in a democratic way. Mm. So that's why we are social democrats. So the principle is the same. And if you look at the way we have done our primaries, I am about the bottom in terms of wealth or anything in the party. I ran against people who, are, who own their own banks and all of that, mm. and the party went and gave it to us. We are some of the youngest among those who ran, and the party gave it to us. 
There are people who have been governors, you know, that's, uh, this and that, trying to come to our party. The party said, no, we want a break from the past. So if you look at our party, you'll see that our party chairman is 53 years old. The presidential candidate is 50 years old. The vice president is 50 years old. And the three of us, and among others, have a clean record, not the part of the problem of the past, but sufficiently in experience in the private sector and in normal working of projects. And that, what that tells you is that, just like Abiola was an accountant, I'm a lawyer, was a businessman, I'm a businessman, I don't have all the kind of money he has, but we have the local and international exposure to deliver projects to conclusion for Nigeria, mm. to see Nigeria as a place, as a site for new projects, new ideas, new investment. And we're not going anywhere. The resources are here. Right now, as I speak to you, people are practically, practically throwing our money out of the window. But if you have a government that believes in justice, that comes in and gives you accountability, you know where your money is. And if you lo look at Abiola's campaign 30 years ago, we were learning a lot about our economy. In 1993 and today, Nigeria has not been frozen. Things are different. Yeah, I wish we were frozen because we, the things, <laughs> we, things are different for the worse. Mm. There's no that things are better, unfortunately. We look at it, maybe the only difference is that we have GSM and it doesn't even work as much as it should work. So, but you can see that this is the problem that we are confronting. Mm. I, I wish I don't have to spend one second of my time to talk about the government or the other people. But once we mention what is wrong, their names pop up. When you have a nightmare, you see them in your dream. They are the cause of all your problems. So what you now do is to say, let me cut loose. Even in therapy, they will tell you, you, can, you have to get away from your abuser before you can say you want to heal. So this abusive system, it could be that they are doing deliberately, as of some psychopathic, whatever. It could be they are doing it out of incompetence. Now, whatever is the cause, we'll find out later. Let Nigerians have at least four years of reasonable government because my mother, I still remember Mutala Mohammed, and he was there for six months. Mm -hmm. Which means Nigeria respond mm -hmm. to good democracy. Goodness. In practice. My grandmothers would tell me stories about Azikiwe, about Abadi uh, Bello, about. So, which means that if you can give good government to Nigeria, it, people would think that Abadi Bello ruled for 40 years. No, <laughs> well, just for six years. So, give us a breather. Give mm -hmm. us a break. Let us run a government that. People who have been in government for 40 years, when they come and say, oh, is this really what government does? I can tell you, it may surprise you, it may sound like this outlandish. People in government now, including the current president and vice president, all of them, don't know what the government is supposed to do. Why do I say so? Because the president came on air and said repeatedly, it wasn't even a business. It is not the business of government to be business. Whereas, even in Kensian economics, the That's ultimate That's goal of fiscal and monetary management is full employment. So, the person who is telling you that it's not the job of government to give you a job has not done any other job in his life than government job. So, you see the problem making. So, once they don't know that it's the job of the government to render services, to make you put a letter to your girlfriend, to your mother, to your co worker easily, to clean the street for you, for electricity to you, they don't know that. They think that the role of government is to take ownership of the road and use a to drive out of the way. Well, thank you very much. We have been engaged in this conversation for about an hour or thereabout with uh, Prince Adewale Adebayo, presidential fallout bearer of the Social Democratic Party. We've been engaging the issues and all the matters that drive in Nigeria towards 2023. And we're hoping that and praying that the optimism he's raising in terms of creating a new path will come to be. Thank you very much for I must thank you and thanks to the audience. And thank God you bless much. Nigeria. Thank you very much for being with us. We'll be with you again discussing some other issues driving the Nigerian project. Thanks for being with us. Democracy in practice.